Hello again, it's your internet dad sharing life lessons that I offered my own sons in the hope that they'll help you. Uh, don't forget to uh, become a subscriber or share the link with friends who, think, who you think can be helped. I cover a whole raft of different subjects and today is one of the uh, sadder uh, but inevitable ones and that is how you handle the loss of a family member or a friend, somebody that you know. The title of the talk is Death, Disbelief and Denial. Now that may seem a weird combination, but there's a lot of theories on how to handle grief and um, uh, this is mine is only one of them. One of the major ones I talked about the five stages of grief and the first one of that was uh, denial and isolation, then anger, disbelief, negotiation and acceptance. I'm going to suggest that the number one, denial, is actually the most valuable of the whole lot and I'm a strong advocate uh, that that is how you can handle such a loss easily. And remember, uh, we're talking about human beings here, but for many people, their pets can be equally important. So the lessons can apply there. Now, I'm not a therapist or, or a doctor. I've just observed life throughout my lifetime and have seen a lot of loss. And I'm going to argue that the way I handle loss is a lot better than what may be offered to you in terms of long therapy lessons that may be a waste of time and money. For thousands of years we didn't have therapists and somehow uh, we survived. The, a corporation or a school is under pressure to do something in the event of a disaster such as a loss of multiple family members, a fire or a school shooting and they resort to counselling because it's the only thing they know. I'm suggesting without a medical degree or any training, uh, just having witnessed a, a lot of loss in my life, that a lot of their therapy could be doing more harm than good. And I'm not suggesting that they're bad people, they're doing their best, but I just can't for the life of me understand how it's a good idea to immediately after a disaster to, to be asked to verbalize it in graphic detail when it's still fresh in your mind. Your body has a defense mechanism, it's called denial. We use it in many different circumstances, one of which a good example might be if you're involved in a car accident. For the first five or ten minutes you'll be able to function, get out of the car, help other people, uh, because in part your mind's not gra grasping it yet. It's going to take you some time before you realize there was an accident and then maybe you'll keel over. But in the meantime you're being defended by that denial. And that denial can help you in long-term loss as well. It can take weeks, months, even years to get over a loss. And in the interim, do remember to use denial. If you're in a circumstance such as I've described and the authorities are providing a counsel and you want it, by all means do it. But it's your life and if you don't want counselling and don't think that right now you want to face it, you want to delay it, then for goodness sake, say no. So to summarise, disbelief and denial can be your best friend uh, in accepting loss and absorbing it over the period of time that you need to believe it. So just don't be rushed into it. Now if you think this can help uh, a friend of yours who has been involved in loss, by all means share the link. It's um, internetdad.us, internetdad is one word, uh, Google it and you'll find this video and hopefully a lot of other videos that can help you uh, go forward in life. 
loss is horrendous, but it's part of your life's journey. Uh, be prepared on how you can handle it and hopefully it'll be easier for you. Good luck.